Hello. This video will show you how to set up a Lightning node on your Start9 Embassy and begin transacting on the Lightning network. Transacting on Lightning requires access to a Bitcoin node. You can use the Bitcoin node on your Embassy, or if you have a Bitcoin node running somewhere else, you can use that instead. Also, if you are using your Embassy's Bitcoin node, or any other Prune node, you will also need to install Bitcoin Proxy. Bitcoin Proxy allows multiple services, such as BTC Pay Server and Lightning, to share a single pruned Bitcoin node, with each service receiving its own unique set of credentials for security purposes. To learn more about Bitcoin Proxy, please visit the repository on GitHub. Okay, with the prerequisites in place, it's time to install Lightning. Because we believe competition fosters better products, Embassy offers two different options for running a Lightning node. The first is Lightning Network Daemon, or LND, and the second is C-Lightning. LND is the most widely used and has widespread wallet support. C-Lightning has a plug-in architecture that enables more advanced features. We highly recommend that you do some research to determine which implementation is right for you. And if you really can't decide, there's nothing preventing you from running both at the same time, right on your embassy. In today's tutorial, we're going to use LND, so let's install it. Please keep in mind that LND is quite a large app, and we've sped up this video for the sake of time. Next, we need to configure LND. There are a ton of configuration options for LND. We invite you to explore them, but today we are only going to touch on the basics. First, give your node an alias, which is how your node will display to other users of the Lightning Network. Next, let's check out LND's Bitcoin Core settings. As you can see, by default, LND is going to use the Bitcoin node running on your embassy. If you want to change this, you can do so here. For this tutorial, we're going to leave it connecting to the embassy's own internal Bitcoin node. Okay, let's back out of the config and save. Now we're getting a message that our LND node has an unmet dependency. This is because LND does not currently have access to Bitcoin. To give it access, we need to create a new user in Bitcoin Proxy. Luckily, Embassy OS takes care of this for us. Just click Fix, then Configure. Here you can see the new LND user that was created for us. Now click Save, and we're all done. Now we can start LND. It can take up to a couple of days for your LND node to sync. You can check the sync status of your LND node inside the Properties section. You can begin using your LND node right away. However, if it's not completely synced to the graph, you may have problems with sending payments. In order to use your new LND node, you will need to select a wallet. Your Embassy Marketplace offers a wallet called Ride the Lightning, which will automatically connect to the LND node running on your Embassy. Today we'll use Ride the Lightning since it's right here on the Embassy. So we'll find Ride the Lightning in the Marketplace and click Install. You could also set up a mobile app, like Zap or Zeus. Like LND, Ride the Lightning is a pretty big app, and will probably take longer to install than our sped up video here. Again, we find ourselves in a needs config state. In Ride the Lightning, we have the option to use another LND node besides the one running on the embassy, but we don't want to do that. You could also set the password if you want, then hit save. Then hit start. Ride the Lightning is served as a web interface in the browser, so to use it, we just have to visit its Tor or LAN address, or even easier, just click Launch Web Interface. So this is your personal, private, Ride the Lightning interface, and it's asking for a password. So let's go back into the Embassy, go to Properties, and copy the password we initially set inside the Config menu. Then we can go back to Ride the Lightning, paste in the command, and log in. It's a great idea to save your login credentials to your personal, self-hosted Bitwarden extension, so that you don't have to flip back and forth to the Embassy to copy-paste usernames and passwords. And there we have it. You are now using the Ride the Lightning wallet which is using your own LND node, which is using your own Bitcoin node, all running on the embassy and all using Tor. Before you can open a channel and start transacting on the Lightning Network, you need some Bitcoin stored on your LND node. Be advised, Bitcoin funds that you transfer to your LND node are hot, meaning that they are stored directly on your embassy. There is no way to use cold storage when using Lightning, which is why some people call it reckless. 
For this reason, it is usually unwise to move large amounts of Bitcoin to your LND node. That said, you don't want to move a tiny amount either, since that would limit your purchasing power on the network. We recommend moving between half a million and five million Satoshis, or 0.005 to 0.05 Bitcoin, which at today's US dollar prices is about $250 to $2,500. This gives you a solid amount of purchasing power, but hopefully it wouldn't ruin your life if something were to go terribly wrong. If you feel comfortable using more Bitcoin, then by all means, go for it. To deposit Bitcoin into your LND node, we will use Ride the Lightning. Click on OnChain, then Generate Address. Scan the QR code or copy this address, paste it into your Bitcoin wallet, and send the Bitcoin. Be sure to use reasonable fees, since moving Bitcoin on-chain can be quite expensive at times. If you want to be frugal, you might even wait for a day when the fees are lower. This is, of course, one of the main reasons for Lightning, to make transacting in Bitcoin instant and nearly free, so we don't have to deal with the high fees and 10-minute block times. Okay, as you can see, my LND node is now funded with 5 million Satoshis in my on-chain wallet. Once you have on-chain funds, it's time to open a channel. Opening a channel with a well-connected node is how you get connected to the rest of the network, and it immediately grants you outbound liquidity. This means that you will be able to send money to others. Unless you are planning to become a Lightning service provider, you do not want to open more than a few channels at most. Managing many channels is difficult. It can be quite expensive, and unless you plan to devote significant resources in the form of time and Bitcoin, there is no profit in it. If your goal is to use Lightning to benefit from instant and near-free transactions, you only need two to three good channels. In this tutorial, we are going to open a channel with the Start9 HQ node, which is already very well connected. You can find the Start9 node on a Lightning Explorer, such as 1ml.com, the link for which we will provide in the video description. To open a channel with Start9, you need to copy the node URI and paste it into Ride the Lightning. So we'll click Copy, go to Ride the Lightning, Click the Lightning tab, then Peers Channels, then Peers, then Add Peer, and post in the node URI. Once the peer is connected, you can then decide to open a channel, and enter the size of the channel you want to open. It is not recommended to open a channel for less than 100,000 Satoshis, or 0.001 BTC, which is around 50 US dollars at the time of recording anything less, and it's possible that the cost to open and close the channel might approach the size of the channel itself. The bigger the channel you open, the more outbound liquidity you will have, which means you will have more spending power on the network. In this tutorial, we're going to open a channel for 2 million Satoshis. When opening a channel with a Start9HQ node, we ask that you make it a private channel, meaning that it will not display publicly on the network graph. The reason for this is that unless you intend to be a Lightning Network Services provider, Having public channels decreases not only the reliability of your node, but also Start9's ability to route payments for you. After setting these parameters, you can click Open Channel. You can then go to Channels and see that the channel is pending. If you do intend to be a Lightning Services provider, please contact us for further assistance in one of our community channels or via email. Now that you have outbound liquidity, you will be able to pay others. But if you want to receive payments, you will need some inbound liquidity. The first, easiest, and best way to get inbound liquidity is to use your outbound liquidity to buy something. Any Bitcoin you spend using your outbound liquidity is Bitcoin you can now receive back. So if there's something you want to buy, like a Start9 Embassy or a t-shirt from the Start9 store, simply make the purchase and you will then have inbound liquidity equal to the amount of Satoshis you spend. The only way to get inbound liquidity without spending or selling Bitcoin is to convince someone to open a channel with you, just as you open a channel with a Start9 HQ. This may be a difficult task since there is not much incentive for someone to open a channel with you unless you are also very well connected. Also, you will need to make sure that they too are well connected with plenty of inbound liquidity, or else your inbound liquidity with them will not really matter. In other words, they might be the only person capable of paying you. So options 1 or 2 are best. Use your Lightning Node's outbound liquidity to either purchase something or sell some Bitcoin. 
Now you can pay and get paid using Lightning in an amount equal to your outbound and inbound liquidity.